Shalom and welcome to another episode of GMS Mailbag, here to feed the elect through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Now in this lesson we're going to talk about the new moon, since there's been some uh, controversy concerning that topic again. Uh, the revelation of the new moon was brought through Elder Torah and it's totally scriptural. And the new moon is indeed a Sabbath. And not only is it a Sabbath, it's actually a solemn day of the Heavenly Father. It's actually a day of solemn worship to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shem Yahushai. It's not just an ordinary day. It's a special day in the sight of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, the new moon, which you will find in this lesson, the term new moon actually means first day of the month. And um, we'll examine that in this lesson. Now, this is based upon a video that this uh, jackass who goes by the name of Upstate Israelite, I call him Upstart Israelite. Uh, and all you have to do is look up the term Upstart, what it means. This guy is nothing but a complete moron, a complete jackass, an idiot. And evidently, besides not being able to read, he can't count as well. And we'll examine that in this lesson. As you see the title of the video he did, Severe Laceration to GMS and Irish Gabar. You know, just uh, exercise. This video is nothing but an exercise in madness and confusion and disrespect. You know, um, and it tells you in the scriptures that in the last days you'll have upstarts like this moron uh, showing disrespect to their elders. And keep in mind, we never called ourselves elders. The spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai bestowed that title upon us by the brothers around the uh, different states calling us elders. And uh, this guy is no different than Batak or Sarge. And those of you brothers who remember Batak and Sarge, remember they would do certain videos, try to come against the elders, and then, you know, they that lasted for a while, and then all, all of a sudden you don't see them anymore. Well, it's the same, this guy is going to meet the same fate. But personally, I hope the Most High destroy his ass. Yes, I hope the Most High kill his ass. You know, that's just me being personal about it. But um, I want to show you, brothers, a comment that uh, this jackass made, which uh, proves my point that in addition to not being able to read, I guess he can't count. Uh, he... Basically, it starts with him asking a question about how many lambs were sacrificed on the Sabbath. All right, now, as you can see here, according to his comment, the total was 13 lambs sacrificed uh, on, on, in a month's period of time. All right, so, and you can clearly see that right here in the comment. So, let's go and examine it. Uh, the new moon, on the new moon, seven lambs uh, sacrificed, Numbers 28 and 11, and indeed that is true. If you go into Numbers 28 and 11, which I didn't know that scripture, because I asked that jackass, how many, how do you arrive at the number of seven lambs being offered on the new moon? And uh, if we read here, and in the beginnings of your months, which, which is the new moon, you will see that in this lesson. Ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot. So it is conclusive that on the beginning of the months, which is also known as the new moon, seven lambs are offered. So if we go back to the comment, indeed, seven lambs are offered. But what this jackass failed to include is that you have something called a daily offering a daily sacrifice, a continual offering, actually. And we find that in the book. If we go back to Numbers in the th third verse, the same chapter, 28th chapter, And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord, two lambs of the first year without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. So in addition to the new moon, which is the first day of the month, for that month period, you have... Uh, continual burnt offering, which the number of the lambs offered on a continual burnt offering, day by day, is two. So for the next, besides the new moon, which it would be the first day, assuming we have a 28, 
28 um, day period of the month. Two lambs would be offered each day for that 28 days. As a matter of fact, um, I uh, created a model so I could explain this to you brothers. All right, uh, you see the new moon here, seven lambs are offered, and we read the scripture. The daily sacrifice, two lambs are offered. We also read that scripture. That's in Numbers 28 and 3. Now on the Sabbath, two lambs are offered as well. All right, so if we go back and add that, assuming we have a 28-day month period, all right, for argument's sake, on the new moon, you would have the seven lambs plus the daily sacrifice, which gives us a total of nine lambs. So on that day of the new moon, which is the first day of the month, nine lambs would be sacrificed on that day. Now you also have the rest of the days of the month, which would equal, what, 27 days. All right, so the rest of the days, including the remaining Sabbaths of that month, which would be three. Now also keep in mind that the new moon, which is the first day of the month, also doubles as a Sabbath. So we won't, we won't count that Sabbath, all right? We won't count that Sabbath. We'll just count the rest of the days, including the rest of the Sabbaths of that month, which, which leaves us with three Sabbaths. So you go the rest of the days, including the remaining Sabbaths of the month, two lambs by 27 days equals 54, all right? Plus six lambs, that is two for each Sabbath. Rem remember, it was three remaining Sabbaths of that month. 6 or 2 times 3 or 3 times 2 equals 6, 6 lambs. So if we add that, we come up with a total of 60 lambs, plus the new moon, which is 7 lambs, plus the daily sacrifice, which is 2 lambs, gives us a total of what? 69 lambs. All right? 69 lambs. So I haven't explained that, which I hope you brothers got it. If you If you didn't, you can pause the video and look at it. Having explained that, how the hell does this guy come up with 13 lambs? As you see here, 7 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. You know why? Because he forgot about the, the, the continual offering, which let's go back and read it again in uh, the book of, uh, as a matter of fact, this is from uh, a website called Animal Sacrifices, and even they mentioned the daily sacrifice. You know, let, let's read it over here. It says, uh, one lamb was killed in the morning and another in the evening. The daily sacrifice is also called a continual burnt offering. So for that month period, assuming we have a 28-day month period, you have something called a daily sacrifice, which is sacrificed day by day, or a continual burnt offering, which in this comment, he did not include. He simply included the seven lambs as a uh, sacrifice on the new month. He forgot the daily or the daily offering for, for that new month, and he forgot the daily offering for the rest of the month. <laughs> All right, he just added the rest of the Sabbaths, which were left, which is three Sabbaths, right? Which is uh, two lambs here, two lambs here, two lambs here. Total of three Sabbaths. Add it up, it adds to thir uh, six. Six plus seven is 13. Totally off, man. This guy has no conception of how to count. And where he messed up at, is that he did not include the daily sacrifice, which in Numbers 28 and 3 clearly tells you to offer up a daily sacrifice. That's why I return, I put a comment. I put also, let's see, let's see here. Yeah. Before I read this comment, I put uh, on the new month, which is a Sabbath, or on the new moon, which is a Sabbath. There's also a daily sacrifice as well, right? correct, which is, you know, you still have a daily sacrifice, even for the first day of the month, because it's part of the month, isn't it? It's, it's a day, isn't it? So you have a daily sacrifice. Seven lambs are offered on the new moon, plus the daily sacrifice, which is two lambs, a total of nine lambs on that day. Now you still have the rest of the month for the daily sacrifice, exactly, and Sabbaths, of which two lambs are supposed to be offered. How in the hell do you get 13, you stupid idiot? Exactly. Exactly. As you can see, let's go back and look at it again. He put 13 lambs that are offered on the, in the month's time. 
Then he has the nerve to put repent. <laughs> Fucking jackass. All right. Let's read the. Uh, <laughs> And this guy is proud because he came back with this scripture. You're proving that you're you're an evil man. Clearly, anyone can see you're a devil. No, clearly anyone can see that you can't count. Let's get let's get this jackass. You see this jackass here? He can't count. Evidently, he can't count and he can't read, and he has no perception of scripture. That's why you should shut the hell up. But you know he's not going to be quiet. He's going to continually commit iniquity upon iniquity until Yahweh Bashem Yashai judges his monkey ass. That's all. Also, I put, also you forgot about the continual burnt offering of two lambs every day of the month, not just the Sabbath, you jackass. Exactly. And here's the scripture, Numbers 28 and 3. And that, and thou shalt say unto them, this is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord two lambs of the first year without spot day by day for a continual burnt offering. So in his equation down here, and coming up with the grand total of 13 lambs, he forgot the continual day-by-day -day offering, which would put it a lot more than uh, 13 lambs. As a matter of fact, my calculation would be a lot closer to the actual number. Now, this is based upon assuming we have a 28-day month period. All right? So there you have it. So once again, proving that you know, these young upstarts who come into truth, who think they know something, you know, they um, they prove time and time again, being proud, that they don't know anything. That's why the scripture have said, when a man thinketh that he knows something, he deceiveth himself, roughly paraphrasing. All right? And, you know, the fact that um, I have some scriptures um, up here, I have a couple of scriptures at least before I go into the topic of, uh, you know, this is a sign that we're in the last days because you're going to have these individuals like this guy. And you saw that with Sarge, you saw that with uh, Batak, that are just reprobates, that are niggards, that's what the scriptures call them, and they're hell-bent on dis dis disrespecting the same men that teach them, in this case their elders, which is a clear-cut sign of uh, a niggard, which is a clear-cut sign of a reprobate. This is found in the book of Isaiah 3 and 5. It says, And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. Another term for neighbor is your, your fellow Israelite, your fellow countryman. It says, The people shall be oppressed. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. See? So that's an example right there. You know, a child meaning this guy don't know anything. That's why he's in the room. A completely dark room with, uh, you know, with, there's, there's no light because there's no truth. <laughs> Looking like a real demon, man. Got the nerve to tell me to repent. And if I asked him what the word repent means, I guarantee you would be, would be able to define it. All right. Here's the next scripture. 1 Timothy 5, 17 and 19. It says, let the elders that rule well be wor counted worthy of double honor. Now, we didn't call ourselves elders, all right? The spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai saw fit to have us be called elders by the brothers that are from uh, different states. They started calling us elders. And the spirit also jumped on them to say double honors to the elders. And you got a lot of guys that are jealous of that. And uh, here's an example. He's one of them. All right? Reading on, it says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. And I should say that that guy, he doesn't even go out in the street and teach. Now, pursuant to Luke 14 and 26, it tells you to go to the highways and the byways, to the streets, the lanes of the city, and compel the Lord's elect to come in. You bring that scripture to his attention, he'll tell you, Oh, no, that's the internet, man, the internet. We can teach on the internet. The internet is the highways. A total reprobate, just like I said. All right. Uh, reading on, it says, Against an elder, receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. So, according to this video, he's saying that I'm going off, that he's cutting me. Well, me being an elder, you're supposed to have two or three witnesses to collaborate what you're saying or what you're about to reveal. Where's his two or three witnesses? 
All right, that's a that's according to the law. Let me read it again. Against an elder, not just an ordinary brother, an elder, receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. So again, you can clearly see that Yahweh Hashem is not dealing with this fucking asshole. And very soon the Mosai is going to exterminate his, his Samoan looking ass. It doesn't even look like an Israelite to me. He looks like a, a Samoan monkey. All right. Now, let's get into the lesson here. Um, but before, even before I, I get into it, I just remembered um, one of the questions he asked was, you know, concerning the sacrifice of, of the sacrifice the sacrificing of lambs, right? That's what brought all this. And before I answered his, his uh, comment, I did put a scripture. I said, look, the only lamb that I'm concerned about is Yahweh Shai. <laughs> this is where I got that from. I got that from John 1 and 29. It says, the next day John, which is, that's John the Baptist, see if Yahweh Shai coming unto him, and he was coming unto John to be baptized of John, and say, if, behold, this is what John said, and saith, Behold the Lamb of the Heavenly Father, which taketh away the sin of the world, the world being Israel. The sin meaning breaking of the law, transgression of the law. So why would I be concerned with the sacrifice of mere lambs when I have a lamb, a real lamb, that died for us, the elect, and took away our sins? This is what we believe through the faith of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. That lamb being Yahweh Shai. And that's what I was trying to tell this asshole, because he was hell bent on um, asking the question: How many lambs were sacrificed on the Sabbath? In some vain, futile attempt to debunk the new moon Sabbath. Tell you, man, <laughs> these reprobates are getting worse and worse and worse. Just complete madness. But anyway, as you see in the book of John, one and twenty-nine, this is the lamb we're concerned about, brothers. We're concerned with. Not no mere lambs. We're, we're concerned with this lamb, which, by the way, those other lambs which are sacrificed, they're dead. But this lamb, he's still alive. He's sitting at the right-hand side of the Most High Yahweh, getting ready to make his return. And when he comes back, he's going to dispose of morons of motherfuckers like that. All right? Personally, I'd like the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahshua to give me that power so I can have fun with a moron like that. But it is in the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. Now, um, to further add to that scripture of John, this is found in the book of Hebrews 7 and 27. It says, Who needeth not daily, we're going to go right to the point. This is dealing with Yahweh Shai, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. This is why John the Baptist called him the Lamb of the Heavenly Father, who taketh away the sin of the world. Now you notice it says, for first for his own sins, and then for the people's. Proving that Yahweh Shai in his past life, he had sin, as Adam, as Solomon. So when he offered up himself on the cross, not only did he cover the sins of the elect, he also covered the sins that he committed as Solomon and Adam. All right, so he did that once when he offered up himself. So again, that is the Lamb I'm concerned with. Not the lamb or the lambs that this guy is talking about. Showing you that Yahweh Shai have no place in his spirit. He's not one of us. He's nothing but a reprobate. Nothing but a Samoan monkey trying to look for attention. All right? So now, let's, get, let's do it. Let's get into the lesson here. Uh, first, I want to explain to you, brothers, the term new moon. Because I guarantee you that moron has no idea of what the term new moon means. The, new, the term new moon simply means new month, because the word moon means month. This is a thread, which uh, another term for thread is called an online discussion. It's also known as a thread. This, is, this thread is on the moon and month. Yeah, believe it or not, you have intelligent people every now and then that discuss intelligent things. So this is from Suffler. All right, and it says, I noticed that in in Erie, oh no, I noticed that in many languages, the words for mo for month and moon are very similar or just the same. Any ideas why? Yeah, 
the idea of the truth. The truth is that the word month and moon is the same. They mean the same thing. All right. But let's examine this online discussion here and see what we can find. Now, this is from Welshie. As you can see, dated here March 211, 2011, actually. Many calendars are lunar uh, based on the time it takes the moon to complete one rotation of the Earth, 28 days roughly. That's why when I created my model, i share it to you again, of the lamb, sacrifice, the sacrificing of the lambs, I, I created it based upon a 28-day month period because I believe the Hebrew calendar was centered around 28 days. And as you see, even this person here, whoever this person is, they uh, acknowledge that because they use the same number of, of uh, days, 28 days. Now, I can't pronounce this name here, but this person's discussion goes as such. It says, I looked in Etam, Etam online, and that said that the English word month is related to the word for moon. I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah, so see what you learn when you uh, tune into a <laughs> GMS mailbag? <laughs> uh, the word month means moon. All right, so when we say new moon, we're saying new month, which is actually the first day of the month. Now, let me show you something uh, dealing with the word calendar. Okay. When you look up the word calendar, it gives you the definition, the table or register with the days of each month and week in a year, which days turn into months, months turn, I'm sorry, days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into year. So it all hinges upon the day. That's why the that's why the moon or the sun and the moon is so important because it regulates pursuant to Genesis the first chapter, it regulates the day, which regulates the day regulates the week, which regulates the the uh, month, which regulates the year. Each one hinges upon each other. All right. So now I took a look at that word calendar, and I kept on reading, and what I found that the word calendar. Now, you're going to like this, brothers. The word calendar is from the Latin calends, as you see here, calends, all right? Calends, actually, the actual Latin is calendarium, calendarium, uh, equivalent to calend, calend, calends. If we click on calends, what does it say here? Calends, the first day of the month in the ancient Roman calendar. So the word calendar literally means first day of the month. So the word calendar is synonymous with the new moon, which the new moon is the first day of the month. The word month means moon, new moon, first day of the month. All right, so now uh, we have the definition from from the Etam Online, we have the definition of the word moon. Let's take a look at that. Old English, Mona, from Proto-Germanic, Mem uh, Menon, Old Saxon, and Old High German, Mano, uh, is Dutch, Moan, or Man, is it? Yeah, Man. Uh, German, Mound, Gothic, Mina, Moon. From uh, from Pi uh, Moon Month, see that? Let's blow that up there. All right, so you so you can see it for yourself. Moon Month. Okay, that's what the word literally means. The word month literally means moon. So when we say new moon. We're saying new month, all right? And you can go and look that up for yourself. Could just go to Etymology Online and type in the word moon and see what you discover, all right? Now, in the book of uh, seeing that um, the new moon is the first day of the month, 
that's the day that opens up the month. And if we go in the book of Exodus 13, 1 and 2, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beasts, it is mine. So if we apply the concept of the day, or really the concept of the month, what opens up the month? That would be the first day of the month, which goes back to the word kalends, which we looked up. The word kalends literally means first day of the month, which goes back to the term new moon, which is the first day of the month. So the new moon is a very special day. As you can see, it says, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn whatsoever. In this case, the new moon would be the firstborn of the month. It would be the first day of the month. So essentially, it's like a firstborn. Whatsoever openeth the womb, if you look at the month as being like a womb, what would open it up? The first day. Among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. So the first day of the month belongs to, all the days belong to Yahweh Shem Yashai, but the first day of the month is a very special day. As a matter of fact, this brings us to the book of uh, Sirach, the 33rd chapter of the Apocrypha, in the ninth verse, it says, well, let's start at the eighth verse. Well, let's start at the seventh verse. Why doth one day excel another? And you're going to learn that all days are not the same. There are certain days that are very special to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. When as all the light of every day in the, in, the, in the year is of the sun. Exactly. It's the same sun that lights up every day of the year. And do you know, even though when it's cloudy out there and it's, and it's stormy, the sun is still shining. It's just that the clouds have blocked the sun and you can't see the sun. If you were to take a plane and fly above the clouds, you would see the sun all the time. All right, so there you go. By the knowledge of the Lord, they were, they were distinguished, talking about the days. And he altered seasons and feasts. And what did he use to govern those seasons and feasts? He used the body of the sun and the moon to govern those, those seasons and feasts. You can find that in the book of Genesis, the first chapter. Some of them have he made high days and hallowed them. And some of them have he made ordinary days. So you have your ordinary days and you have your high and hallowed days. Your high days would be your certain feast days, like case in point, the Passover. Now your hallowed days, as you will learn in this lesson, one of an example of that is the first day of the month, which is a hallowed day, which is a special day, which is also known as the new moon, the first day of the month. All right. Matter of fact, let's look at some scriptures now. This is the book of Psalms 83, or 81 and 3. It says, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. So not only is the new moon a Sabbath, the new moon is a solemn feast day. All right? It's a day of uh, to honor Yahweh Bashem Yashai, which we honor him every day, but it's a special day, like we read in the book of Apocrypha, the 33rd chapter, around the ninth verse. Matter of fact, if you take a look at the term new moon in the Blue Letter Bible, the word there is Kadash, Kadash, which, which means new. All right. And as you see here, the first day of the month. So what is it, the new moon? The first day of the month. And uh, if you keep on reading, as you see here, what do you see here? Kalends. All right, here it is again. The new moon, the day of the new moon, the first day of the month, the kalends of a lunar month. What does the word kalends mean? We looked that up. It means the first day of the month. So, you know, the kalends of a lunar month, which was a festival of the ancient Hebrews. Did you see that? Which was a festival of the ancient Hebrews. So the first day of every month was a special day to our history. All right? And they even have certain scriptures to support it, which we're not really going to go into. We just made our point in just bringing out that revelation. The word kalends means first day of the month. All right? So 
Yeah, this is all right, man. This is all right. And uh, we can we can uh, thank personally, we can thank this jackass right here. <laughs> you see, you scoffers, what you don't understand, you scorners, you scoffers, you, you low-life reprobates, we're the juggernaut, man. When you push on us, we come back right twice as hard. That's pursuant to Ezekiel. It tells you that in the book of Ezekiel, when our when uh, these people make their face hard against our face, we make our face twice as hard. I mean, the more you push us, the more we push back, and we push back a lot more forcefully than you push on us. You can believe that. All right? So let's go back and read this again. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. If the new moon was not, um, if there was no significance to the new moon, why is that written? Now, I'm not saying, right now, I'm not going to even say that the new moon is the Sabbath. You will clearly see that by the end of this lesson, as I read the scriptures. But just in this scripture alone, you can see the importance of the new moon. All right, and we read the definition on new moon. And you see it was a festival kept before Yahweh Hashem Yahashai. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the power of of Jacob. All right? So the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahashah was right on point, descending on Elder Taha to bring out the revelation of the new moon. And just me reading, just going into it even deeper, I found out it's a lot more than the Sabbath. It's actually a solemn day of Yahweh Hashem Yahashah. It's the first day that opens up the womb of the month. And we read in Exodus, the 13th chapter, Whatsoever open of the womb of the Lord is special, is special unto him, and he, and he have sanctified it. All right? Here's the next example, the book of Isaiah 66 and 23. It says, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one... Why does the scripture keep mentioning about the new moon, if the new moon is in, insignificant? Because people, especially jackasses like these, like this idiot, don't know what the term new moon means. It simply means new month. And the first day of the month begats what? The new month. All right? So going back to Isaiah 66 and 23, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Again, I ask you, brothers, why would the term Sabbath be in conjunction with the term new moon, because the new moon is a Sabbath. And now and it's not more than a Sabbath, it's a day of of a solemn a solemn day before Yahweh Shem Yahusha. It's a special day before Yahweh Shem Yahusha. The day that opens up the new month. Each month, each day that opens up the, the new months, which they are what, twelve? Each day that opens up the new month is special to the Lord. All right, it's not just an ordinary day. Remember, we read that in the Apocrypha. Some have he hallowed and some have he made ordinary. Remember, we read that. Now, here's the next scripture, Amos, the 8th chapter, the 5th verse. It says, saying, I'm going to go right to the point, when will the new moon be gone? Now, this is the scripture that I posed to that fucking jackass right here, and he couldn't discern it. All right? He couldn't discern it. Because, like I said, he don't know. What the hell does he know anyway? What the hell does that Samoan monkey know anyway? <laughs> uh, Amos 8 and 5, saying, When will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? Why were they waiting for the new moon to be gone that they can sell corn? Now, remember in the law, if you go in the book of Exodus, um, I mean, yes, we do have it. Exodus, the 20th chapter, let's read the law concerning the Sabbath. Exodus the 20th, 20th chapter, beginning at the ninth, well, beginning at the eighth verse. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day, which, by the way, the word Sabbath, not only does it mean rest, Shabbat, it also means seven. All right? The Hebrew word for seven is Shabbai, and Shabbai and Shabbat is synonymous with each other. The word means rest, and it means seven, because on the seventh day, even the Lord, Yahweh Shem even the Lord, well, the angels, Yahweh and the angels rested on that day. 
the seventh day, which in the book of Genesis is actually the seven thousand year, because pursuant to Second Peter three and eight, it tells you a day to the Lord is a, a thousand years to us. But the point is, the number seven also means rest. All right, so Exodus twenty and ten it says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy power. In it thou shalt do no any thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So that's why, keep in mind, the, the subject matter is Sabbath. So that's why when you go back to Amos 8 and 5, that's why they could not sell corn. You see that, right? Saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? They couldn't sell corn because it was a Sabbath. It was a Sabbath. That's why they could not sell corn, going back to the law. The new moon is a Sabbath. This conclusively proves that the new moon is a Sabbath. Because had that not been so, they could have sold the corn. All right? When will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? Amos 8 and 5. And, and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat. And once again, you see the conjunction of the word Sabbath and new moon being in line with each other. Why? Because they're basically the same thing. The first day of the month, which is the new moon, going back to the word calendar, or calends, I should say, the first day of the month is a Sabbath. It opens up the month. It is sacred to the Lord. It is special to the Lord. It is hallowed to the Lord. All right. Uh, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balance by deceit. So the point is that they had to wait till the new moon was gone so they could sell corn. And when you go deeper into this verse, it's really talking about the wicked prophets and the wicked uh, wicked teachers. Even they knew that they had to wait for the new moon to be gone that they may sell and uh, gather, sell and gather. Why couldn't they do it on the new moon? Because it was a Sabbath. All right. So we should note that. All right, so we read that in Exodus, proving what uh, the Sabbath entails. Now, our final scripture is uh, the book of Colossians, the second chapter, the 16th verse. And even so, you know, you had this guy, show you again how unlearned he is. You had this guy making a big deal about the Sabbath, excuse me, the new moon Sabbath. If we go in the book of Colossians, which we're about to read, it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Again, you see the conjunction of the new moon and Sabbath. So listen, Duke, you ain't supposed to judge me based upon my belief of the new moon. All right. Again, I'll read it. It says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. And that's why we, we tell uh, these guys out there, we show them that the Sabbath is actually the new moon, is regulated by the new moon, but if they don't want to accept it, yeah, we're not going to judge them, all right? We're not going to judge them. We're telling them, we're telling them you're going off, but we're not going to judge them. The judgment is reserved for Yahweh Bashim Shai. So again, it says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. If you want to keep the new moon as the Sabbath, you have that right. You know, not only is it because it's the truth, but more so it is written that you cannot be judged of that matter. All right? Or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. Exactly. Because in the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, all of that is going to be set up. All right? The new moon is going to be set up. The new moon is going to be set up as a Sabbath. And, uh, you know, we're going to keep the Sabbath perfectly. But that's in the kingdom of Yahweh Shem Yashai, when this kingdom is destroyed. That's why the scripture says, which which are, what is the new moon? Because our focus is on the new moon. And which, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Yahweh Shai. See? So, you, you know, for this guy to go around judging in particular, judging an elder of all people, an elder or elders about how we keep the new moon as a Sabbath is totally off. 
But what did, what do you expect? What do you expect from a novice, from a fucking jackass who doesn't know his ass from his elbow? What do you expect? The Lord the Habashi Miyasha is not dealing with this monkey, you know? So basically, you know, I've, I've insulted this asshole enough, you know, <laughs> since getting to be boring. But uh, I just wanted to show you brothers a point. You're going to have idiots like this in this thing of ours that from nowhere they're going to come claiming they know something. And the more they talk, the more they show they don't know jack shit, you know. So with that, this is GMS Mailbag, here to feed the elect through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashai. Hope you brothers uh, uh, learned something in this lesson. Now you know what the term new moon means. It simply means month, as you see here, the word moon and the word month. Let me show it to you again. Let's tell you, research is a dangerous thing, man. Moon, month. You see it, right? Okay, so... The term new moon literally means new month. With that, GMS Mailbag, here to feed the elect, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. I say uh, death to all scoffers and scorners, in, in particular certain reprobates that disrespect the elders of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Death to them and destruction to them, and peace and blessings to the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom.